Hi there, I'm Dr. Stephen Fallon. Welcome to Dental Excellence video number 20. And the topic today is one critical factor for anterior provisional restorations. And if you look at this slide, this is a case um, that I've been working on the last few months. And these are the initial provisional restorations. I was photographing the initial provisional restorations and I looked at it and I thought, oh my, <laughs> I've made a big mistake here. And what I'd like to ask you is what is wrong with this provisional? It's pretty obvious as soon as I um, went to photograph it, I could see I've left the embrasure, the gingival embrasure between the centrals too closed. It's too closed. And what that means is with the embrasure really closed, it blocks the papilla a little. And when it blocks the papilla, it flattens it. And what'll happen is when you go to insert the case, you might have a black triangle or you have, you know, a shape of, of, of the restoration that matches the pre-treatment papilla and does not match the papilla after um, the provisionals have been in for a while. And this was going to be a longer term rehab case where we were changing the vertical dimension and the occlusion design and the incisal edge position. So it wasn't going to be tested for a while. So I couldn't leave this like this. And so fortunately I caught it. Uh, taking pictures helps sometimes and documenting everything. So as soon as I took this picture, I realized looking at the uh, image that I had somehow <laughs> lost focus and missed uh, carving the papilla as aggressively as I like. And so if you look here, I started carving it and there's multiple ways you can do this. You can use a 7901 diamond. You can use a mosquito diamond, a 7901 carbide. You can use something like a vision flex disc from Brazzler or any thin, thin disc. Uh, regardless, what you want is this kind of papilla outline form when you seat the provisional restorations, or at least something like this, whatever would match the pretreatment papilla form. So you can see here, we've carved this adequately at this step. And this was the day that we seated the restorations, the provisional restorations. So you can kind of see some bleeding just from cleaning everything up. But overall, the shape looks better than what we started with, which was blocked a little bit. It was just a little blocked. It's a small mistake, but it's a critical mistake because then I would have a blunted papilla here, which I really do not want. So this was again the day that we seated after I had carved this, I realized when I was taking the pictures. Here is one week later, you can see the papillas uh, uh, healing nicely. It was maybe less than one week. I think it might have been five days. Uh, but overall, tissue looks really good. Papillas all look good. I did do a little reshaping of this tissue and it's still a little inflamed, but that will heal. If you look at the two weeks healing, at two weeks we have really ideal tissue uh, papillas between all the anterior provisional restorations. And these are splinted together. The final restorations will be single units, but I find um, it's easier to splint these at least in four unit segments. This was actually an eight unit splinted uh, provisional. Um, that's about as many as I would splint together in one provisional typically. But the key here is I carved the papilla. I'm going to have a nice papilla form when we go to seat the restorations. And you can see here the close up of the papilla carved. So this looks good. Again, you can carve this with uh, a number of different instruments and it works well. Here's the before image of this patient's treatment. And here's her after provisionals. You can see it would be important because if you had a black hole here, it likely would show even in a full partial full smile. She has a fairly high mobile lip line, so it shows even in the before, kind of showed the papilla, so we want that to be replicated in the final restorations. Now, I just received the final restorations uh, yesterday and I've unboxed them and taken a quick little video you can see here. Let me show you that. This is a quick little video of the final uh, Feldspathic 
restorations. They're what we call glove crowns, really, because they're highly uh, uh, translucent uh, feldspathic jacket crowns on minimal preparations. The teeth have been prepared very minimally. In fact, the upper restorations on the bicuspids are more onlay veneers than jacket crowns. Um, we were just following where her erosion was to restore the teeth. Otherwise, I typically would do veneers on a case like this if there's no palatal erosion. But you can see the uh, aesthetics looks quite nice. Uh, nice reflective surfaces. Here's a close-up view of the restorations. Good translucencies. Nice contours here. If you can imagine if I had left that papilla blocked, this is the contour that Harold Heindel, my ceramist, created matching the pretreatment papilla form and it would have been a problem at seeding. I'm going to be seeding these in the next couple of days, so I'll update some pictures on my blog about the case when uh, I've had it seeded and I guess healed a little bit. Another case example with a similar papilla contour to the provisionals, you can see here, here is the case. It's another uh, long-term provisional restoration. We were opening the vertical in this patient and altering uh, the incisal and anterior guidance, and we were adding some implants in the posterior. So it was kind of a staged case. Provisionals were in place for almost three months. This is at the seating appointment. You can see the tissue looks pretty good. Um, actually, this was a couple of weeks before seating because I could see here the tissue still wasn't quite right here. Um, so what I'll tell you is a tip is if the tissue is not quite perfect around the provisionals, like it isn't here, we have the patient in the week before for a scaling appointment, and we put the patient on chlorhexidine, a chlorhexidine rinse, uh, that they can use a monojet syringe with, and syringe around these areas the week before for a whole week that we seat the case. Now, if you look at when I removed the provisionals, tissue looks much improved. So this area here had some inflammation, but after the scaling appointment and the chlorhexidine treatment for a week before seeding, the tissue looks really good. And you can see the thing that I really wanted you to see here is the papilla form created by the provisional. So this sharp carved uh, shape to the papilla is really the result of the provisional contours, which I created with discs in this case. And if you look at the, the provisional cement that's been left on the teeth after removing the provisional, that is Duralon. It's a polycarboxylate cement. I do think that tissue health looking this good is common with Duralon after long-term provisionals. These were, as I said, closer to three months because it's, it's very bactericidal. It loves killing the bacteria. The bacteria don't grow on this really well, so it works very well. Um, and we tend to have very good tissue health around provisionals cemented with Duralon. If you look close up here, again, you can see that nice shape to the papilla. That's really quite uh, sharp and defined, which is created from discs, as I said. If you look, what we have to do, though, here's the, another view of the papilla. What we have to do is we have to uh, remove all of this, typically with a sonic scaler. The Duralon tends to stick to the tooth surface. So I remove it with a sonic scaler and then I micro etch the surface with a sandblaster, intraoral sandblaster. You can see this dark area here. This isn't micro leakage. That's actually where there was a little bleeding when I was seeding the provisionals and it's just turned uh, dark. So overall, this looks really good. Here's the micro-etched version well, when we inserted the case. So I've micro-etched this. There's a number of composite resin core buildups on the, on the teeth, so I've micro-etched those as well. That helps with our long-term bond strength. <laughs> and the close-up version of this after micro-etching and cleaning looks really good. The sharpness to the papilla has been lost a little bit because the, the papilla was sharp like that because of the contours of the provisional supporting it. When they've been off for about 15, 20 minutes, it flattens out. But then the, the restorations, the final restorations, will create the final papilla form. What we want here, though, is volume of papilla that hasn't been blunted down by the provisional restoration. Now, if you look at the restoration seeded immediately, this is immediate seeding. 
everything looks really good. I've cleaned all the uh, excess cement with my microscope really effectively. And then two weeks later, you can see the final restorations. Two weeks seeded with the papilla and the tissue form looking really quite good. And if you look at the before and after for this case as well, there's the before and after. Looks quite nice. Big change for the patient, especially in the cuspid form and cuspid and anterior guidance. And the smile view looks good as well. You can see the nice papilla before and after with our restorations. And this will improve too. This is only two weeks post seeding. It improves and improves over the course of about six months. These restorations were completed by Harold Heindel from Aesthetic Dental Creations. He's a master German trained dental ceramist that I use for my uh, aesthetic cases and rehab cases. And if you look close up at the um, final results, Papilla looks, I think, quite good. And really the, re the reason this looked good at two weeks and so early is because of the shape of the tissue post-provisional placement. And these provisionals, as I said, were in place for two months. They supported and created this contour in the papilla that was quite favorable for aesthetic dental restorations. And I used a series of discs and uh, different instruments to create this. If you'd like to see some videos on how I create my provisional restorations in the aesthetic zone, including some video about seeding provisional veneers, in the aesthetic zone, as well as uh, how do I create single tooth anterior provisional restorations on implants in the aesthetic zone. I have a new online seminar you can attend. Here's the URL to attend. It's slash precision for precision provisionals dot um, hyphen reg. We're actually going to put a link to this um, registration page under the video on the various platforms that we produce this video or have this video hosted. I'll try to put a link in the, in the video too. Uh, certain platforms allow that, certain don't. But we'll have a link if you'd like to click on that link. Again, I have a number of different videos within that seminar that will support you by seeing how I'm creating these restorations, these provisional restorations that are very long term in use. And we use a microscope to create a lot of these videos, so it's very detailed training. So I think that uh, this one tip in this dental excellence video can be very helpful to make sure that you visualize that shape that we want, that contoured shape to our provisional restorations in the gingival third in the papilla area so that we can get excellent long-term results, aesthetic results for our patients with our cases. So that's dental excellence, video number 20. And remember, you can do this kind of dentistry. I totally believe that beautiful dentistry with precise fit and occlusion is not just for the gurus. So thank you and we'll talk to you soon. Take care.